friends, welcome back to my channel and I hope you've been having a great day so far. As you can tell from the title of the video, I'm going to be showing you seven inexpensive food styling props. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure that you do. I release a video every Thursday at 2.30 p.m. PST. And if you haven't followed any of my social media accounts, they are down below. I release content again on every platform and they are sort of different. So hopefully you'll find something that you'd like. And without further ado, let's get started. I have been a full-time creator for about six months now and I have monetized my blog already. And I want to show you guys that it's really not that hard to start from the ground up. And I feel like a common misconception is that you need money to be a full-time creator or you need a lot of items and um, a lot of equipment that are expensive, but honestly, you really don't. I currently film my photos and my videos on my iPhone XR, which I honestly got free from upgrading my phone plan when the contract expired. And you really don't need a DSLR and everything when you start. Right now, just start with what you have and you know, keep upgrading, keep building, keep learning, keep growing and find out what works for you. And this setup just works for me right now. And I am excited to start upgrading soon. I've used my equipment for the past six months and slowly I am getting ready to buy new things. Okay, so I hope I can keep this short and sweet, but honestly, this is something that I could talk about for hours. My blog post that I wrote on this yesterday was the probably longest blog post I've ever written. I think it's over 1500 words ish and I usually write like 500 to 1000. So I'm going to try to keep this condensed. But the first point in this seven inexpensive food styling props is the backdrop. So I was struggling a little bit when I was first doing this. I felt like my photos look super bland um, and really boring, but I have soon learned that I could do this really cheaply. But the first thing that I wanted to invest in was a backdrop. And basically what I did was I went to the dollar store and I got these poster board cardboard things for like a dollar to $2 max. And then I just bought adhesive from Amazon and I put the adhesive on. Honestly, you don't even really need adhesive. I just wanted the adhesive because it's easy to clean off and wipe off food. Like if you can tell here, there's like a food stain and I didn't cover this with an adhesive so I can't clean it off. But with this one, I've spilled a lot of food on here and you could clean it off. The adhesive sells on Amazon. I can put a link below. I've bought light wood, um, marble, and also white contact paper. Um, and it's really easy to take off. You can peel it off whenever you want. And yeah, this, is, this was my cheap way of doing it and I did it for a really long time. I took photos on just a white background. And then soon I actually upgraded onto wood slabs. So I was really fortunate to get wood slabs from my cousin's husband. He um, does cabinetry and they have spare wood pieces. So I got a few of these and then I just bought contact paper again off Amazon. You can also find them in the dollar store. It's a little bit lower quality. This one is a low quality dollar store one that I didn't do too well on when applying. There are like holes on it. But uh, again, you can get these wood slabs from Home Depot. I was planning on buying them, but I got them for free, which was really nice. And then I have a few of these with different backgrounds. And I even use my coffee table as well. And that kind of just elevates the texture in your food photos. I'm not exactly sure how much a wood slab is, but um, just make sure to save your money, visit the local hardware store as much as you can and see what is affordable and yeah, just kind of like builds it up. But again, I started from the poster board, which was like $2 and now I'm using wood slabs. Okay. The second tip I have is to use utensils. So I have bought beige and white utensils here. You can honestly use whatever you want. Depends on your aesthetic. As you can tell from mine, I am all about white and beige, so I've just bought these. These I bought from the grocery store, this I've just bought from the dollar store, so it really depends on the item that you're taking a photo of. For instance, if you are doing cookies, you might want to use a rolling pin or even a 
spatula. If you're doing some kind of like stir fry, you might want to use a wooden spoon in the photo. It really depends on the dish you're taking a photo of. But just remember that when you, like as a viewer, when you take a look at the photo, you want to see or you want to be able to kind of guess what it is without really knowing what it is. So you don't want to use a soup ladle for cookies or you don't want to use like a fork with like a smoothie bowl or you want to make sure that any items that you put relate to that dish or um, really bring it out and not just random things in a photo even though it looks good. <laughs> so in my opinion, I think it's really based on your style. The third tip I have is adding florals to your food photography. Um, again, like you can do this in a really inexpensive way. I bought fake florals and stems as my home decor, so I used it over and over again in my photos but you can always pick flowers from outside if you have a garden to use it or you can always get a cheap bunch from your local grocery store every week you do groceries and then use whatever you have to take photos with. I love this as it's part of my aesthetic so I use a lot of um, fake florals in mine but again it's like really up to your photo style. I've seen a lot of different feeds and accounts that don't use flowers at all which is also fine but you know it re again it really depends but an inexpensive way is to getting um, fake flowers and florals. The fourth food prop tip I have is again different plates, cups, and dishes. So I've just got a bunch of dishes here. This one I bought specifically for food prop so I don't eat on this and I actually have a box set aside in the kitchen where I keep all my food props so I can just take them out whenever I take or whenever I recipe test or whenever I have a new recipe. These ones I bought as a regular plate and they were super cheap from Ikea. I bought these for like, I think 60 cents to 90 cents each. And then these bowls, I literally just picked up from the dollar store and they just have like a little bit of texture. I think that's what's most important. You wanna get an assortment of dishes and stuff that have texture. These ones have like little dots. This one is kind of like a taupe beige color with like circles in them. And then also this, this one's clear so you can see inside of it. And this one's just a plain dish that um, you can put whatever you want on it and like style the plate itself. But you can really shop at your local thrift store, your mom's storage, your local dollar store, Ikea superstore, something you already have. But again, just a good assortment of dishes so you can put different things in them. I also have cups I forgot to bring out, but I mean glass cups. I got mine from the dollar store at Ikea um, for coffee, smoothies, drinks, whatever you need. But yeah, you really don't need to go far from them. I know how tempting it is to get like Pottery Barn stuff and Crate and Barrel stuff and you know, all of the big brands where they sell home decor and kitchenware, but just hang in there, use what you have, save your money and then upgrade and really think about what you want and what style you want later on and then that'll be the right time for you to invest. The fifth tip I have for cheap food styling would be to use cutting boards instead of dishes and plates. So I have an assortment of cutting boards here and I got every single one from the dollar store. So I think this one was about $2 or $3 and it has a really nice marble and like wood sides to it. I really love this. I use this to style my food all the time. So I highly recommend this one. The next one I have is, um, I think this is kind of like a cheese board, but I have put like the maple mustard wings on them. I have put my Canadian butter tarts on them and I really love the look of wood with food. It looks really good. Again, these are all under $5. I think this was like three or $4. And then I've even got this really big one. I mean, I also use it to chop, so it's double purpose. And it is kind of getting out of shape, but I've had this for a long time and I believe it's $4 as well. I honestly love plain food. I think I put the crispy garlic shrimp bites on here. And honestly, so much. I've done charcuterie boards on here when I have guests and it goes a long way so just make sure that you check your local stores 
And honestly, wood boards are so beautiful when you do have the budget for it. The sixth tip I have for food styling um, in an inexpensive way is to use a lot of linens and fabrics. So this is something I actually really lack. I'm actually a little bit more picky when it comes to a lot of linens and I'm hoping to buy more high quality ones in the next month or so. But I basically just use um, any kitchen towels I have. This is what I have on top of the oven and I just kind of use it to fill up space or add in some color into my photos. And I also have these really cute um, hand crocheted coasters that I added and I put under the bowls as well. I got this from my friend who does this on the side um, from Post Secondary. And then I've also got some oven mitts, which I'll link below. These are my favorite oven mitts and I think they are so cute. They are so my color. And I kind of just add them here and there to the photo. It's usually the last thing I add. I usually make sure that I have all the utensils, the food, um, any florals I have, um, any plating I do, and then I add in the fabric just in the end to fill up any empty space. But again, I am really, really focused on buying new ones. I have my eye on a few from Pottery Barn and Creative Barrel. So hopefully at the end of the month, I can actually place my order instead of having them in the car for so long. Okay, so last but not least, um, my seventh, seventh tip, and it's probably the most inexpensive because you already have it. You really don't need to add um, any more things, but it's to use extra ingredients. So I just have a clove of garlic here and I am not recipe testing this week. So um, I don't have a lot of extra groceries or anything in my fridge and pantry, but I highly recommend saving a few pieces of maybe chopped parsley or maybe some fruits if you're doing like a fruit smoothie and just chopping on the side and adding on the side. I always do this. Um, I sprinkle extra parsley, I have extra cheese, I have extra ingredients. Um, even if they're used, it's fine too. Like when I did my clementine chocolate mousse recipe, I took the orange or the clementine that I squeezed out and I added it into the picture and it made it look so good. And then I also added some fresh unopened clementines as well. And it just ties in the picture together. And again, like I was saying earlier, you want the viewer to see the photo and know what's in it or kind of get a gist of what this could possibly be. If they just saw the clementine um, chocolate mousse, they would probably know what it is because I did add the candied orange on top. But again, like you want to be able to guess. For example, my roasted cauliflower recipe, I added a few crushed garlic cloves on the sides. So, the viewer will know and think, okay, this recipe probably has garlic in it because, you know, there's garlic in the photos. So it's just more appealing to the viewer. And it honestly works as a hook as well because when they see the extra ingredients, it, it clicks in their brain immediately like, ooh, this is a flavor that I like. I am going to click on it, read the recipe, or, you know, I'm going to read the caption and find out more about it. Okay, I feel like I was talking really fast, but I hope this makes sense. I didn't want to like prolong this to like a 30 minute video. But again, for all the full details, you can check out the blog post. Uh, I'll link it down below. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really wanted to emphasize again that you don't need a ton of money or a ton of things to get started as a content creator, especially if you want to be a food blogger. And I just use my iPhone, so it's really not that bad. You really just need to start and learn as you go. You'll get better with time, you'll be more comfortable. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, full blog post below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure that you do. I release a video every Thursday at 2.30 p.m. PST. All my social media links are down below if you haven't uh, follow me on those yet and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will catch you guys next week. Bye! Bye.